Hi, I'm Jim Gordon. I'm Lita Lee Benson. And welcome to another edition of Our City Tonight. Well, Jim, we're downtown in the financial district of Vancouver at a brand new restaurant. Well, they've been open since the summer. Yeah, been so. Uh, Hydra Mediterranean Restaurant and Cafe and Bar. Let's get right to that title sequence. we got a big show. Here it is. This edition of On the Town is brought to you by Genesis Lower Mainland, a new kind of all-inclusive luxury experience with two great locations in Richmond and Vancouver. Well, we're upstairs now at Hydra, and as we enter into the autumn season, there's also great autumn cocktails, and that's why we're here with Mark, the main guy, to uh, taste some of your beautiful and unique cocktails here available at Hydra. Thank you very much. Well, to start the harvest, we have our achilati, which is a pear cocktail. We've done a little uh, dehydrated pear garnish on top. It features a star of Bombay gin, a little uh, Ares uh, Solera sherry, and our Ambrato vermouth, finished with some pear bitters. Ooh, that Very sounds amazing. Nice. Am I allowed to taste it yet, Jim? Uh, or not till after? Wait till, well, <laughs> we always do on camera anyway. Uh, this <laughs> looks like something old school. What it is, absolutely. It's a classic sort of an old fashioned, but it's funny that you can take just a small change and then make it sort of fall style. So we've taken fig, which is more, uh, you know, kind of Grecian as, as we are, the, uh, and beautiful with uh, Scotch Dewar's uh, whiskey. A little uh, fig on top and a little uh, fig syrup. They both look absolutely beautiful and you've got kind of the fall colors happening here, delightful. And you guys are known for your unique cocktails. Thank you very much. Yeah. So. Uh, one of the things we're going to do now, we're talking cocktails, but you may have noticed, folks, we have a little wine out here. One of the things that Lita and I noticed as she's taking a drink, we should be yelling cut right now, but we won't. Uh, oh, that's great, Mark. <laughs> one of the things that uh, we noticed when we came in here for the first time to eat, um, you and your staff, said you got to try some Greek wine of which we knew little and so you wanted to show a little wine because yeah folks they do have some great Greek wine here and they you will of course school people like you did with us on what's a good uh, glass of Greek wine to have so tell us what we're doing here well thank you very much these uh, I actually didn't know very much about the Greek wines myself but these were amazing as I got to really love them this one is uh, from the Nausa which is a northern of Greece and this is Dino Mavro is our grape now it's kind of a cross in between a Barolo and a Burgundy and it's just beautiful. It has that nice astringency dryness, but also the round cherry fruit. And it's, it's gorgeous, really, really nice. And you are the expert on wine for the restaurant group, actually. Yes, and for so us, we're, absolutely. We're privileged to have you here with oh, us. And I know that when people come in, they can certainly um, get your help in pairing with your beautiful food. Of course, it's always a pleasure. You should also see a good happy hour here as well. Oh, excellent. Yes, yes. one yes. Um, Three to six, seven days a week. I'll tell you what, a happy hour also includes food, which we're going to sample when we come back here in a little while while here at Hedra. Well, we're downtown Vancouver at Van City Theatre, which is the home to Vancouver International Film Festival. Actually, a home for you too, Jim, because you've been a film critic for 23 years. Yes, now. don't do it much anymore, but boy, every autumn this was a place I wanted to be. It's the 38th annual film festival. It's a great time for this city, and if you're a film fan who doesn't get a chance to see a lot of international film, this is great, great time for you. And they bring a lot of great local films as well. A lot of our friends are in those films, yes, right. so it's a lot of fun to be here at the launch. But this festival runs until October 11th, so catch the schedule online. Well, continuing our coverage here at the Vancouver Film Festival, I'm saying with a guy I've known for a long time, he kind of mirrors the film and TV landscape of this country, of this city. It's John Cassini, who, and I gotta get all these credits out, actor, producer, writer, director, acting coach. Yeah. You do all I of run, that. I run a studio called Railtown Actor Studio. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was saying, uh, when I introduced you, literally five seconds ago, um, when I look at your career, you really have seen, especially in this city, the film and TV community really grow into adulthood. When I look back at your early yeah, credits, yeah. can you talk a bit about that and this festival maturing into adulthood? Well, I thought this festival, I think this festival has always been great. Um, the the uh, growth of the industry, I feel, has a lot to do with 
uh, us being so well trained under the service industry as well, right? Because mm -hmm. I came up working under a lot of that canal stuff in the 90s. I think a lot of the crews did as well, a lot of the actors. And so I think uh, now we're putting all of those tools, whether they be producing, whether they be experienced actors, uh, crew, uh, into our uh, local productions. Yeah. It's very, very true, I think, yeah, having the Stephen, Stephen J. Cannell, right? That's yeah. The, yeah, did all those Rest shows in, in the peace, 80s. Yeah. Yeah, 80s and like 90s. Jump Street, Wise Guy, Booker, all that stuff. Yeah. It was almost a rite of passage to be on those shows, yeah. uh, especially yes. coming from Toronto. Yeah. Uh, you're also here to talk about your latest film. Yes. Um, let's talk. It's, it's playing right now at the Fest. Fest, of course, is ongoing as we speak. Tell our viewers a bit about Daughter, which I watched last night, and I'll give my thoughts, but you go first. Oh, well, Daughter is uh, basically deals with um, the themes of grief and moving on. Uh, I play Jim, a man who um, is dealing with uh, the death of his daughter and sort of this spiral and this descent before he finds his way. I, I really think with a kind of character in a storyline like this, there really is no right and wrong way or path for a character to go down, is there? Yeah. You can't say, no, we would never do that. Yeah. It's just all individual, and this guy takes a long time. We shouldn't say there's no there's no reveal the daughter has died. Yeah, you sense that right off the beginning, I found, for the, and it's yeah. just the, the, yeah, the details come in later, right. but it's you're so caught up in the study of what your character's going through. Mm. Can, uh, you're a guy who loves to prep. Um, talk about prep for that, playing that role. Well, one of the luxuries of this particular project is it was developed with the director through my studio. So we, we, I was able to sit with the with the script for a while. Yeah. Um, you know, I do. I, I I looked into grief counseling. Um, I, I, I had a really great relationship with the writer-director, Anthony Shim, so we were able to kind of really uh, delve into all of the different aspects of grief. I think uh, as we looked at the movie and the journey of Jim, we were very much looking at all the stages of grief and, 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 and not to hit those on the nose uh, distinctly and, and, and sort of so obviously, but those were layers that were always alive in him. Uh, and then, you know, just, I have kids. Yeah. So it <laughs> wasn't, your best, uh, it wasn't, access, right. it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't that difficult. Uh, great cast and yeah. uh, congratulations on a, a wonderful career. I would say as a, a member of the Vancouver Film Critics Circle, I was very proud to be part uh, of the group that gave you the Lifetime Achievement Award back in 2017. We wish you continued success, John. That really meant a lot. Oh, no, I'm yeah. glad to hear that. We were, uh, th that was one of the few times where it was completely unanimous across the board. Oh, Everyone go ahead. Yes, of course. So uh, it's John Cassini, his movie daughter showing right now at Biff. Well, uh, my favorite place to shop in Vancouver is Emile's Clothing Company. I'm with uh, Shanna. She's the owner, and we're here to talk about a whole bunch of things. Let's start with your store, which I said to you earlier, every time I come into the mm -hmm. store, I just, my energy level in a good way just relaxes. I calm yeah. everything. It's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, what you offer your customers here in this wonderful store. So I created a meal to create um, not just a retail shopping space, but also to create an atmosphere where you could lounge, you can hang out, the pressure isn't there to mm -hmm, shop. Mm -hmm. um, and so in that way we have a lounge where you can hang out, you can have a coffee, you can have a beverage mm -hmm. if you like, and uh, we kind of take you around the store and show you what you have and let you kind of enjoy that meal experience. When I uh, first met you guys, I was uh, in a very tailored, conservative kind of suit thing, and you guys, I love the jackets you've got. A lot of black. Got, a lot of black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. Good eyes, that's yeah. right. Uh, but you guys really got me into some nice jackets. Like This is a new fall one I'm wearing. Mm -hmm. and I, it's For me, it's un, it feels very unconstructed, but oh, once I got into it. It's it, completely it, unconstructed. You know, it, but yeah. I'm wearing dress pants, but I also wear jeans. Like that's mm -hmm. one of the things I like about the jackets you're putting me in is that it can. It's got so many different combos you yeah. can go with it. So uh, this being one of them, I love this color blue. Let's talk about some of the fall trends you see with your expert eye and what you're putting out this year for your customers in the fall of 2019. So for fall, um, we're seeing a lot of warm hues. We have mustards, we have plums. We're also seeing tailored jackets with soft lines, but really hugging the body like this mm -hmm. jacket is mm -hmm. right here. 
Um, also knits. Knits are some of my favorite uh, part of our collection. We get them from all over Europe, from Scandinavia, Germany, uh, Ireland. Yeah. Um, and just the layering of things together where you have um, a shirt that's a DeSoto, which is a sports shirt. You could put an SNS cardigan on top of it and then a Lubian blazer like you're wearing right now. And you also, and this is nothing against Canadian made uh, product, but you also uh, pride yourself on bringing products in from around the world. When I walk through your store, I see it. Uh, your jeans are from California. Jeans are from but California, but everything else is um, from Europe. And there was a conscious effort to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of thought that was missing in the market in sure. Vancouver in yeah. particular. Um, our brands are very classic and style, like I've said before. Um, you don't have a lot of logos, not a lot of sequences, and being a lawyer previously, I had a lot of colleagues that were saying, you know, I can't find the right clothes for me on a Sunday. Like, something that is casual, but is very tailored and clean. Mm. Um, and so that's where this idea came from, and Europe seemed to have that particular genre of clothing. I like that you brought that to our city. Uh, we're fairly good fashion in the city, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's a nice, a nice change. Give me some other thoughts for the fall going forward for our male viewers out there. What do they need? Um, I would say layering is going to be a huge part of fall. So whether it's going to be a t-shirt or a sports shirt underneath with a sweater or a cardigan, a blazer, we've got great overcoats coming. Um, and then pants. We just started carrying Brax pants. They're a relaxed, comfortable fit, but they look great on anybody type. Okay. Uh, one thing I noticed you have on the shelf from when I was last in here in August are gorgeous looking overcoats because we have damp, cold winters. Mm -hmm. And I like the styles you've got. Some of them are really old school, which I really like. Yeah, so we have a variety of overcoats. Um, you can go from um, the traditional overcoat that Sealip does 100% um, waterproof, not mm -hmm. water resistant, so it's not going to get damp at all inside. Right. And then we have um, Samso and also LBM 1911 that does the most classic plaid, um, thick wool overcoats that you can throw on top of a suit or when you're going out on a date on Saturday night. Right. Or, yeah, so we have nice. a combination of both. Uh, we should also mention too, I have been here several times in the past uh, not to buy clothing but to attend events. You right. actually have a, a nice kind of lounge and bar area at the back there we where do. people, so people want to have events. I've been to a couple of them, they're pretty cool. This is a pretty cool spot to have an event. Yeah, so we love hosting events. Um, we've done a couple events for ourselves, whether it's um, a new launch of a brand or just to celebrate something like mm -hmm. Christmas or our anniversary. But we've had a lot of brands also come in and take over the space and invite their guests and, you know, Get the music going and everybody has a great time. Very nice. Uh, you're also very active online. People can find out more right. from you guys at uh, what website? We're at www.emilclothingco.com. We're also on Instagram and Facebook. Very nice. Shanna is, of course, the owner here at Emile Clothing Company, downtown Vancouver, I guess we could say in Yale Town. In Yale Town, yeah. Very nice. Okay, it's Emile Clothing Company. Come check them out. Back here at Hedra. Now, first we started with cocktails, and now we're going to sample some delicious, delicious food. Now, Chef, you have been around the world cooking. You've been to France, Switzerland, Africa, United States, and you're back here in Canada. Yes. And we know that you're cooking your authentic homeland food here. How did that come about? Uh, I think it's a circle that is closing in life. Oh, yeah. We talk in the past, I'd always, I was running away from the Greek food. Mm. It's like kids that run away from home, right? <laughs> and uh, I think I'm getting older. It's a circle that is closing, that it's start pulling me back. Try to showcase uh, something that is closer to the food that we grew up. Well, which, which just leads me to a question that, that when you say running away from the food, you were running away from what has become of the food. I remember when we first met you, you talked about you wanted to create food that you remember from your childhood, yes. sitting around the table in Greece, your, your grandmother, your mother, everybody else making that food, and that's what you're doing here. Yes. Like, uh, like we discussed, uh, we try to present here as a team, as a Hydra team, a, a concept that is closer always to uh, tradition. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, uh, we're looking at some wonderful food and we have to we have to reveal that we actually have had some of these dishes and I know this is one of Jim's absolute favorites. Um, tell us what we have in front of us. Uh, we've got a, a, a typical Greek salad. Uh, the difference that 
we made it here in uh, Hydra is that uh, we're using the best quality products available. Mm. Uh, we're bringing olives from Greece, we're bringing aged barrel feta from Greece, oregano. We, we try to bring as much as the greens as we can from uh, the original place. It, this is our concept. It's a Mediterranean restaurant with Greek backbone. We try to bring as much uh, a green as possible from uh, from Greece. Uh, I'm, getting... I'm just doing my best not to beat my <laughs> fork up, which I'm guilty of doing in our food section. Uh, what our viewers at home will not see after we stop rolling the cameras is Lita and I wrestling over what you've got next here as well. Oh. This is yes. spectacular. Tell our viewers what this is. Uh, that's an octopus that um, is not the typical octopus you're going to find uh, in Canada and United States. Right. It's coming, uh, it's one of the ingredients that it's coming from uh, Greece. Wow. It's a baby octopus. It's a, a kilo, kilo and a half, so that's helping us with the cooking process. Yeah, yeah. Uh, normally with octopus you braise it for a long period of time. Uh, with this one we don't, we're using a traditional method that we braised with uh, vinegar. And then we finish on the griddle, that's it, there is nothing to it, there is no magic, there is no science. It's just some wow. love and tradition, like we keep saying. Oh, perfect. Uh, Very nice. And we're pairing it with some uh, fava. Fava is known as a yellow split pea in North America. That we pair with uh, sun-dried tomatoes and uh, capers. The ingredients that uh, I grew up as a kid, I remember my family, my mother, my grandmother making that dish. A little bit different, presenting different. But those are the flavors that they were making for us, uh, for me and my sister. Well, we're thrilled that you came back to Canada, in particular to Vancouver. That's wonderful and it's great for all of us. I know I'm hearing more and more that um, when people come to Hydra, just one taste will bring them back and back and back. It's just an amazing place. I mentioned that when Lena and I were here last, this is a meal. Yeah. These two dishes, like you don't, you could order certainly more, but I remember yes. going, this is, this is fabulous. We're here at a lunch hour right now. This is a great lunch, great healthy lunch. So, uh, Chef, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day Thank to you join us. And congratulations on being my here. My pleasure. And congratulations on closing that circle, as Let's you said. We, uh, yes, and let's always give credit to the team working inside the of kitchen. Of course, we gotta, we gotta pay tribute to the team, of course, who, who you always mention when we talk to you. Uh, okay, we're gonna wrap up the show here at Hydra in just a little while. Thank you again. Thank you. Now can we eat, actually? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>this edition of On the Town has been brought to you by Genesis Lower Mainland, a new kind of all-inclusive luxury experience with two great locations in Richmond and Vancouver. This house, we built brick by brick, this home, the only one I know. Well, you're looking at the new video for the new single from the Chris Buck Band. It's called Holy Ground, follow-up single to the very successful first single, which I love, called Good Old Days, off the album All In. We're with Chris Buck himself, and we're here at a fabulous restaurant at the corner of Butte and Robson called Blossom, Dim Sum, and Grill. Lita, you have the first question for our good pal Chris Buck. I do, Chris. Oh, my God. <laughs> we love your music. Thank and you. every time you put out a new single, it... It skyrocked. Well, we watched we watch the charts, of course, <laughs> and we can't wait to uh, come to see you live again. Um, tell us a little bit about Holy Ground because it really seems personal. It, it, is, it is personal. Um, I wrote the song uh, basically about growing up in northern Ontario in a place called uh, La Fontaine. A lot of people don't know that. It's about an hour and a half north of Barrie, and my uncle's got 150 acres, and he's got a sugar bush, so he does maple syrup. And every time I go there, when I'm on the road or I'm on tour, it's, I guess I call it my holy place. It's a place where I go to relax and reflect. And I grew up there too, so uh, I wrote a song about it and we shot a music video at the property there. Yeah. Uh, it's so good. And I know that every time we see you, and we don't see you as much anymore, that's mm -hmm. probably a good thing touring for you because you're touring all the time or he's <laughs> avoiding us. Uh, but you're on the road all the time. Um, you've got a lot of dates coming up, which we'll talk about before you take off. Uh, talk about the fans and how they've been. As, uh, as you continue to grow and, and get more and yeah, more successful. Yeah, um, well, I've, I've, it's, it's like the 12th year now for Chris Buck Band, so yeah, I've been yeah. doing it quite a while. And uh, one thing we've always done is played a lot of the smaller communities, a lot of bands at our level sometimes may skip some of the smaller towns and go to the more major markets. Yeah. And I, I found over the last few years playing these small towns, they are so loyal. Like they come out and they remember you and you build little relationships all through Canada. And it's just amazing to see the support 
uh, where I'm at in my career from not only just from British Columbia but all the way across Canada. Yeah. I think what I found too though is I'm not specifically a country music lover right. and, I, and but your music just I think it transcends. It, it is just mm. your 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 songs are catchy uh, and you're, maybe you're making me love country music <laughs> and and I know you don't specifically mm. uh, say that's your genre because right. you you kind of go outside yeah. the boundaries. Totally. Um, you, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of bands they don't write their own music. I write all the songs for the entire band, and I've I've made it a lot more personal where I want to tell my story. So maybe if you're not a country music fan, you can maybe listen to the lyrics and be like, "Holy smokes! Like I can relate to that. Like that's really got a message behind it." And um, I think a lot of my friends don't listen to country music either, but they'll they'll throw on my album just because they they enjoy it. It's got a lot of different influences involved in it, right? Oh, that's great, buddy. We wish you continued success. Thank you. Uh, thank you for always joining mm. us on our city tonight. I think yeah. this is your fourth appearance in the last four years. Well, so I'm a big the, fan of you guys, and whenever you. I'm in town, I always make time for you guys. Thank you very much. Yeah. He makes time for us on camera. We can never get a hold of him off time. <laughs> no, I can't. We can't. We can't. Uh, there you go. The, the latest album is All In. The latest single is Holy Ground. Check it out. Chris, where can they find all the information on you? You're very active on social media yeah, and with your fans. Yeah, totally. If you guys take a second go on YouTube just punching Chris Buck band um, I do a lot of videos on there with family and stuff so uh, have, have a check have a ha look on that or Facebook Instagram ChrisBuckBand.com. very nice, mm. nice. Uh, thanks to Chris and uh, thanks to all the folks here at Blossom uh, dim sum and grill for welcoming us check out this brand new restaurant at the corner of Butte and Robson mm. in downtown Vancouver Well, we're back downtown with Dr. Bob Morrell at the Medical Rejuvenation Center, one of the top centers for taking care of your skin in this city. In fact, I think in Canada, you have such great results. And we're back here to talk about uh, a topic that I think affects everyone, everyone's skin, and that's brown spots, aging spots, aging skin. And you have some amazing techniques that you are dealing with this issue. So can you elaborate a little bit about how do you get brown spots and what we can do about those. Thank you, Lita. Welcome back to our clinic. Oh, love being here. Thank you. Well, it is. At this time of the year, we see a lot of people coming in with brown spots. And the reason is, is it's sort of an accumulation of issues which is caused by the sun over the summer. And it's very popular to want to get rid of these. They're called age spots or brown spots or melasma. And each of them have a little bit of a different kind of a reason and a little bit of a different way we have to try and get rid of them. Well I noticed for myself as I got older I was having some brown spots on my face they would disappear after summer but then I got to an age where they were permanent so I came to see you guys. Well exactly the reason is once you have a brown spot that means you've had solar or radiation damage UVA UVB to the melanocytes that sit in your skin and they are no longer healthy so they put out extra amounts of brown mm -hmm. and when they put out extra amounts of melanin you see it along the bottom which is like melasma you see it in the middle of your epidermis which is brown spots or you see it on the top which is like a lake of brown and that's all from the same thing sick cells that have been injured by radiation mm -hmm. and so here at the clinic we actually have a three-step program for looking after this issue the other thing i like to mention though is they're not cancerous and they never become cancerous. You can get cancer from the sun, but not from the aging spots. Oh, that's good to know. Really it is. And I think that a lot of people come in thinking it is a skin cancer and it's really not. So we have a three-step program. Mm -hmm. First step is to remind people this is so significant that they've got to start protecting their skin because this is sun damage because of radiation. And they can protect it. There's UVB protection and we know that that to be SPF, anything over 30 is good. Mm -hmm. And there's UVA protection, micronized zinc. We know there's that and our products contain that. Okay. Part two is we have a laser program and Paris is in charge of our laser program. So I'd like to have her explain the next part. Excellent. Thanks Dr. Mal and Lita. Here at the Medical Rejuvenation Center, we carry Cyton BBL. Um, BBL is an upgraded version of IPL. It achieves superior results. It targets hyperpigmentation, um, sun damage, um, uh, sun-induced freckles, um, redness, rosacea, and facial veins. Um, over here, we have our PicoSure device. Um, PicoSure um, uses picosecond laser. It targets hyperpigmentation, including melasma. Um, it helps acne scarring. Um, and also skin tone and texture. 
Um, what makes this machine so unique is the um, basically the specialized lens here um, that turns into uh, turns the light into uh, pressure, which makes it very safe for all skin types. So that's incredible. You can actually remove the brown spots that were plaguing me, and I know I'm proof. Uh, but so what is step three in your protocol for keeping your skin beautiful? So the final step is a maintenance program. And you go on it now and you, you're on it forever. Mm. The program is to keep your skin healthy, keep your skin and the melanocytes controlled, and it's composed of a vitamin C product which stimulates collagen, helps decrease the amount of melanin being produced. Mm -hmm. Brightener, which is three kojic acid, azelic acid, and lactic acid, which decrease the synthesis of melanin. And finally, part of part three, which is a kit we have in Demorelli, the final part is back to protecting your skin. We have our SPF 35. Mm, and I've used all the products. I get tons of comments on my skin now um, and being older, that's always nice. So thank you so much for your time and uh, great information for our viewers. We will see you again next time. Thank you, appreciate it. Thanks, Rita. Well, we're back here where we started the show at Hydra, and we've had a great show, but we're now joined by Hydra GM and good friend Claire Wright. Claire, we've had a great time here oh, today. Thank you guys for coming. Oh, and there's so many great things to eat here, and as we found out, to drink, of course. Of course, <laughs> thanks to your team. Yeah, we should say now, hey, we're in the middle of the fall season. You're keeping your menu the same, but... We're going with the same menu that we've opened with, but of course, we're gonna be adding a lot more fall-inspired features, mm. and we have some beautiful fish from the Mediterranean oh. being shipped in daily. Oh my god. Oh, what you guys do with that fish to the table and deboning is spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> That's all we'll say. Okay, thanks to Claire and uh, everybody else here at Heater. Come and check it out downtown Vancouver. I'm Jim Gordon. And I'm Lita Leapens. We'll see you on the next edition of Our City Tonight. Genesis Lower Mainland with two great locations in Richmond and Vancouver. Test drive, purchase, maintenance. They come to you. Some of my clothing provided by Emile Clothing Company, located in Yaletown, Vancouver, and online. Additional clothing for Lita, provided by Blushing Boutique, also located in downtown Vancouver.